In today's episode, we have a discussion with Beth Melton, an avid hiker and outdoors woman who often takes pictures of the many things she sees. Her upcoming book, Love Letters to Myself and Other Poems, features her wonderful nature photography as a compliment to her poetry and writing. Please check out our show notes for more at the end of the show and to leave us a review on your listening platform of choice and to follow us on Instagram at All Outdoors Photography Podcast. And without further ado, it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Welcome to episode 21 of the All Outdoors Photography Podcast, and we've got a very special guest today. Yes, we have Beth Melton. So she hikes, does photography, takes her dogs out with her, or her dog rather, on her hikes and everything. So um, yeah, Beth, just take it away. Tell us about uh, who you are, what you do, and anything else you'd like to add. Okay. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, of course. Uh, my name is Beth. Beth. My name is Beth Melton, of course, and um, I am. I'd say amateur photographer, hiker. You know, um, and that's about it, really. <laughs> Writer, but you know, um. I would like to maybe eventually get more professional with my photography, but I've been kind of lazy about it. So it's still kind of a possibility, but I haven't really decided yet. What would be maybe like your reasons for going professional or do you just kind of like it more as an amateur thing, as you say? Um, well, you know, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm pretty lazy about carrying gear because uh, I've usually when I'm out hiking, I'm kind of more there for the hike and the photography is secondary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but <sighs> plus having the dog with me all the time would seriously hinder my ability to take certain photos, especially ones that would require a tripod. Um, so that's been kind of a problem, but of course, uh, I'm kind of to the point where I think, you know, I have so much time on my hands and everything. I could just take a couple days a week and go by myself with the gear and make the professional thing happen yeah. eventually, maybe. But it's still kind of something I'm seriously considering, I guess. It, I, I feel like... Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I feel like, well, I, I can't really speak much because I'm not like a full-time professional, obviously, but like, I do feel like it's great to have a lot of gear, but you really don't need that much. Cause I feel like we all kind of go through this spell curve of most of us, at least of like, we want to carry as much gear as you want to. I think we talked about this Henry on a previous episode. And then it's just kind of like, we realize what we really need, like what's essential. And we start taking a little bit less and there's kind of, there's like an equal balance um, overall, but you really don't need that much. I mean, professionals, most of them don't really, unless they really carve a niche, like, I don't know, like nighttime photography, they really don't need that much, you know, just for like, let's say basic outdoor yeah. photography, like we all three do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I definitely agree. You can, for most of the stuff we do with outdoors, you could get away with just one lens, I think. And just to- I usually, <laughs> I'm so lazy. I usually only bring one lens with me, but. No, it's, it's not, I wouldn't call it lazy. Seriously. <laughs> Uh, seriously, like, if unless I was was planning on really doing like bird photography for the day or something, the two lenses that I use the most are really the only ones I would need. So it's kind of lazy that I don't carry at least the second lens with me, but hmm. I'll get there eventually. I mean, I mean, you you are also hiking too, so it does help yes. to keep the weight down as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I just, I see that's what it, that's yeah. Sorry. It's fine. I, I just see like stuff like, like the single lens thing or just any kind of like, I see it as a challenge in like a good way where like you have to be really creative. Like if you can take one small telephoto zoom lens with you, that's all you got. You know, I wouldn't really, I would think of that as like being less is more like that's something where you can really have to think outside the box and see with just in the frame of mind of that one lens, like that's all you have. You know, so I, I don't know. Sometimes having right. so much gear with me, well, like you're doing, like you are saying with like physically, it hunkers me down from hiking many miles, but also just creatively where I'm like, I have too much with me and it kind of like decision paralysis a little bit where I'm like, I don't know what to really <laughs> take a photograph with, you know? So that's just how I see it at least. Right. But. Yeah. 
that, you know, that because if I was carrying the two lenses I use the most, it would be uh, of uh, the Nikon 18 to 300 millimeter that I use for most of my photos. And then, of course, I have their 40 millimeter uh, um, macro lens. Mm. Mm -hmm. the micro the micro nikkor 40 millimeter um so those are the two lenses i use mm -hmm. the most mm -hmm. and the macro of course it's only good for macro really and the other one tends to catch everything else so the decision making wouldn't be hard at all but i was gonna say i know you know, I know you don't do much portraits but um yeah you say macro lens i've, I've no. heard it has good results with um being portraits at least yeah. yeah sure is that what other uh gear do you use do you do you have a tripod with you or any filters no no tripod i mean i have tripod oh. I, but i have yet to carry it out with me because <laughs> i'm kind of lazy about it but i i keep i keep telling myself you're going to do this eventually you're going to leave Belle at home. You're going to go with your tripod and you're going to try like um, some more long exposure. Because I do, I like, I, I really like that effect, but I have not seriously experimented with it yet. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's one thing I would really like to do um, that I haven't yet. And it's just a matter of, getting myself determined and motivated enough to do it, I think. Yeah, so it definitely is quite the investment to bring a tripod with you everywhere. Um, sometimes I even question myself if it's worth it at times, but um, especially if you're not doing like long exposure stuff. Um, but I don't know if you've experienced this, but like the bigger the gear I bring out in the field, the more looks I get. And personally, <laughs> being a very antisocial person, that is not fun at all. Yeah. I found I found to be the yeah, case. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I'm in a... For anyone, yeah, just um, kind of circling back a little bit here. I, if anyone, if you haven't mentioned, Bell's your dog. So if you say Bell, or, yeah, to the yeah, that's, I'm that's, sorry, sorry. that's fine to the viewers. <laughs> I'm just saying, but we'll talk we'll talk more about her in a little bit. But um, yeah, so tripods. Yeah, I, I do agree with you, Henry. Where it's like the the long exposures are the first and foremost. I think for us um, outdoors is I'd say that's the main reason we need them even need them, not just use them or want them. Um, like for landscapes, you can do it handheld in theory, like, and I take most of mine with a tripod, but um, I do think, yeah, it can definitely kind of hamper you down a little bit. Um, so is it essential? Depends on what you do, I guess. Um, but I know, I know Beth, you said you did a lot, of, yeah. not a lot, but you did take a few, maybe some Creek side, little uh, long exposures and you, you had some fun with it. So maybe something to consider a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah. So would you call yourself kind of a multi-genre photographer or like do you do a wide variety of nature yeah. subjects? Um yeah, I do I haven't really done very much landscape. Mm -hmm. Um I like to get wildlife whenever, you know, it, I have the opportunity. Um but macro is definitely my favorite. Shoot, we should have had you on our macro. So episode. I kind of, <laughs> I kind of, I, I, that's, that's kind of what really got me more serious than I was uh, before about photography was just, you know, seeing photographers' macro pictures. And I was just really liked the way that looks and I wanted to be able to take pictures like that. Hmm. So did you, did you like receive any education, like both uh, photography or anything outdoors over your years or like, is there any kind of formal informal, I guess, education? Well, I had a, it was called graphic arts in high school, but it was essentially photography. But um, at the time that I was taking it, <laughs> I was shooting with a 35 millimeter camera and we were using Kodak uh, T-Max 100 black and white film. And we were actually developing everything in the dark room ourselves. So it was quite a 
quite different from what I'm doing today. But uh, could you ever see yourself going back to the <laughs> film photography, or are you kind of sticking with digital? I have thought about it because I I do follow a couple of accounts on Instagram that uh, they are. Um, huge uh, fans of film photography and it kind of gives it almost a different look Mm -hmm. that I kind of like, kind of like sort of almost like that vintage look, but um, I haven't really seriously considered it yet. It's definitely very challenging for sure. I think the the nice thing is yeah. nowadays because you have I mean you have film obviously but you also have digital and you can you don't have to be one or the other I don't think like there's a lot of photographers that do both and they're happy with that because each one kind of brings a little bit different things to the creatively speaking to like the table and the process of developing obviously the prints and stuff so I mean you can you can in theory do both and enjoy yeah. photography even more I would say yeah. The, the one very nice thing about digital is the fact that, you know, you can throw it into a program and edit it very easily. Um, if you want to do something special, uh, as like, for instance, when I was uh, taking the class in high school, like the most challenging uh, developing um assignment that we had was a double exposure oh, wow. oh, cool yeah <laughs> and um it was well, i'm not gonna toot my own horn but it came out pretty do you still good. have that with you or like a, a scan <laughs> it was uh, no no it's it's oh. lost long well, ago but do you, do you remember what it um, looked like i wish i wish could you, could you like describe it to us yes you might visualize it, it was <laughs> yeah sure um it was uh we had we were doing studio uh, ph- photography at that point, and we had to be uh, pair up um, and double exposure. I basically had to take a photo of my partner uh, in one position and then in another position, and um, I had to expose the one, but you had to make sure it was a little bit underexposed. Um, or w- when you developed it. You had to make sure it was a tight, tiny bit underexposed, and then I had to div- I had to uh, kind of layer the other photo on top of it. So basically, when I when I was finished with it, it looked like the uh, the um, partner that I was taking the photos of looked like he was having a conversation <laughs> with himself. It was and pretty cool. That's awesome. You did that with you did that with film, correct? So you must have had to like co- combine it like outside yes. of the computer, correct? Yes, I was, I, we were in the dark room. Uh, you had to do like the, you know, the toner, the developer, basically the, tr- the trick of the double exposure was mainly in the developer set. Um, you had to make sure that when you developed the original photo, you kind of had it underdeveloped a little bit. And then you would go back in and you had to develop the other photo right on top of it. So kind of interesting. Yeah, that I guess. sounds really cool. I like the uh, the concept, like uh, both conceptually and compositionally, with having the. That's like a neat idea of having someone talking to themselves, as you described it. That seems I could I could definitely picture it very well. From yeah. That, so that's really cool. Yeah, I'm trying to remember because like I took I took my classes yeah. in high school, of course. Same here. Um, those were like eight years ago, probably more recent than yours, I think. But um, I'm trying to remember because I think there was an assignment in the film semester because yeah. I won the film and digital. Um, two semesters total. And I think there was a assignment mm-hmm. like that, just like it, where you tried to do like a double exposure. And it, I'm tr- I can't remember what I did, but it probably sucked because I was terrible at the traditional dark room. <laughs> Great story, right? But <laughs> yeah, It was tricky. Yeah. It was tricky. Like uh, it was very tricky. I, 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 I specifically remember that most of the students didn't do it very well. Yeah. Mine came out pretty good though. <laughs> I feel, I feel I feel like we've almost <laughs> like digital photography is great and all, but I feel like we've lost a lot of that wonder, kind of like the the third stage of photography. Like it's kind of disappeared a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you, the I guess the editing after 
taking the photograph now is kind of taking the place of the mm -hmm. whole developing, you know, because when you were doing traditional photography, the when you were actually developing the photo is when you could try to be somewhat creative with it. And now it's more in the yeah. editing. Yeah. I, do you do... <laughs> okay, I'll cut that. All right. Uh, do you do like a large bit of editing to your photos or are you more just straight out of the camera? Um... I, I edit it in Lightroom, just slight. I don't, uh, I don't do anything crazy. So you're with not it. like you're not like a preset person. I've, you're like a filter. Are you? No, no, okay. no, never any filters. Uh, like uh, as far as like if I'm like taking one on my phone and sharing it, like because a lot of it goes on Instagram, of course. A lot of it, like if I'm sharing something from my phone on my stories, I don't care. But if it's uh, one of my actual photos off of my camera, ne never any filters, um, except for maybe like just to turn yeah. it black and white. Yeah, it's it's pretty. Uh, I don't know, limited. Not in like a negative way, but it's like you definitely like to keep everything kind of natural, which I can appreciate. Yeah. Which, like, because I only use Lightroom, um, which is just basic editing. Um, I do have access to Photoshop, but the only time I've ever used it was um, to put the um, the words on my photos uh -huh. for the poetry. That's neat. Yeah. So. We'll talk more about that, obviously, in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's pretty neat, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so like, where does hiking kind of come into play? Where's like the outdoors? Cause you told us now about the photography and all that and, you know, learning it through high school and such, but uh, where does like the hiking and outdoors experience come from? Well, I've, I've always been fond of, um, you know, hiking nature in general. Um, so, um, when I, really developed an interest in the macro photography, which was probably about 2011-ish, I think. Um, it was mainly for uh, natural subjects like flowers, mm -hmm. leaves, that kind of thing. And um, I was always like with like my phone or the whatever, little point and shoot camera I had, I was always taking pictures of flowers and leaves and stuff, but never, never like, ne of course not to the degree that I do now, but um, it was an interest. And then it just, it just kept, it kind of like kept building until I was like, you know, I, I really want to uh, be able to take this to the next level. So and then I got my first when, DSLR. When so. Do you have any? So, do you have any all-time uh, favorite hikes, Beth? Or places to hike? <sighs> well, Hawking Hills is probably in the top right now, but it's for as far as local places. I'd have to say um, mm. Indian Mount Reserve. Mm. It's probably one of my favorites. Um, I do like John Bryan State Park, but I actually kind of like Indian Mountain Reserve a little I've more. I've been to both, and I'd have to agree with you. It's like it's kind of like um, the it's kind of like the John Bryan for hipsters. <laughs> you know, it's like it's smaller, yeah. but like it's still as gorgeous and just the uh, <laughs> so, so it's so good. And I feel like less people go there overall to, to Indian Mountain. Yeah, yeah that's that's another plus about it because especially if you want to take photographs and stuff it's nice not to have mm -hmm. so many people around yeah definitely so um but i think i'm trying to think yeah i think that's well and then of course i absolutely fell in love with huffman prairie this summer for the wildflowers and the hummingbirds these are ohio so. locations if anyone's wondering <laughs> but um but Huffman Prairie, is, no, it's fine. Yeah, Huffman oh, Prairie yeah. is like one of the Sorry. esteemed. I mean, it's like historically famous because that's where the Wright brothers did their flights and stuff. Not North Carolina, but the the Ohio location. 
Um, yeah. Indian Mountains in Reserve is in Cedarville, Ohio, and John Bryan State Park is uh, it's kind of near Yellow Springs, just outside of there. But um, that place is pretty popular because it's a state park. A lot of people go there yeah. all year. But yeah, they're all three great places. So I definitely yeah. agree with you there. I've been to all three plenty of times, and they're they're all for different reasons. They're all yeah. just amazing for hiking and photography. Yeah. I guess I should mention that Hopping Hills is the that already. county in Ohio. <laughs> I've not been there, but yeah. I've seen your photos and it looks incredible. Yeah. <laughs> the long exposures you have taken there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very, very nice, but I, I really feel like it's a little bit yeah. overdone. Because because anybody who's anybody has been taking pictures at Hawking Hills if, in Ohio, so it's mm -hmm. just yeah. I feel like Ohio and scenery, and nature, and hiking. It's like you're gonna go there. That's like the place in Ohio. Seems like for, for better or worse, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I just looked it up. That that's amazing, beautiful Hawking Hills. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. That's not to and then no, and one ahead, place. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> One other place in Ohio that I haven't been yet that I would really like to go is um, uh, the Cuyahoga Valley National Park, I believe. The National Cuyahoga Park. Valley. Yeah. I just I yeah. learned the other day yeah. that's like a really yeah. new park. I mean, like I would, National I, Park, like in the past decade, I think. Yeah. Yes. Dec two decades. Oh. I'm sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and it's from. <laughs> From what all the pictures, oh no, this from all the pictures I've seen of it is just okay. me. Um, it's Ohio waterfalls are so much better than Kentucky so. waterfalls. I'm so jealous. Eh, we got a few, but <laughs> look up the um, yeah, Henry, look up the Cedar. It's called Cedar Cliff Falls. It's at Indian Mountain Reserve. We we're just talking about that. Look up that one. I I think I have been there before, actually. Oh really? Uh, maybe the. It's pretty. It's yeah. Pretty close, probably um, to where your uh, your your uh, grandparents parents live. Mm, grandparents, yeah, yeah. Grandparents, yeah. I think it's like just south of there, probably less than a half an hour drive. So, no, that, that one's gorgeous because it's 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 artificial. Which I mean, I'll dock a point off for that, just because. But it, it's it's honestly like most times a year, it's flowing pretty. It's loud. I mean, it's it's gorgeous. So, so I feel like every photographer in our Beth and I's county is like we've been there, taking a photograph, long exposure of it. It's kind of like one of those spots. Yeah. Um, yeah. but there's some cool waterfalls in there too. I know you've been to, uh, like the more, yeah. I guess, low key kind of spots, you know, what I'm talking about like some of the trails in there, you and me both have gotten shots, mm -hmm. some beautiful <laughs> shots of like some smaller, um, I guess more intimate waterfalls that are along the Creek there. Yes. That's the word. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Very secluded. <laughs> Very secluded. Yeah. That's made people go there, which is nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So um, tell us a little bit more maybe yeah. about Belle, your dog. Like where does she kind of come into play? Uh, when did you get her? And uh, talk about maybe as her kind of like being a companion to you when you go outdoors. Um, well, I got her in September of 2017. And um, she has, because I've, um, you know, I, I kind of struggle with social anxiety um, and just being an, a serious introvert. So going out for hikes by myself was mm -hmm. not ideal for me, but ever since I got her, you know, as long as I have her with me at most of the time, it, I've had no problems, you know, it's been she's kind of my unofficial mm -hmm. um therapy dog <laughs> so uh but you know i i felt like having her around has got me much more comfortable and i'm like i was talking about the whole um idea of going professional and having more hikes solo without the without my dog uh and i think like after getting so used to being out, I'm actually more mm -hmm. comfortable with that idea now. So she's really kind of helped me to overcome some of the social anxiety like um, social issues. I yeah, had. it is definitely. Um, is it, 
I'm trying to think because he said social anxiety, but I'm like, most of the time when you're out in nature, it's like you're kind of like alone too. So like, I'm sorry. What do you mean by that? I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I just, I've just always been <laughs> awkward when you, you know, when you're uh, hiking and somebody passes you and they always <laughs> okay ha- feel the need to say hi to you. <laughs> I was always kind of like, uh, that always caught me off guard. But since I've had Belle with me, most of the time, the attention is off of me immediately because everybody <laughs> is like, oh, look at that dog, you know. So it's been it's been good because it's got me. And it's also got me used to uh, feeling more comfortable talking to people as I'm passing by because they ask me questions about Belle. And as long as the focus is kind of off of me, I feel more comfortable with it. And it's got me to the point where I feel like I'd be more comfortable if I would now after years of doing this with her, that I'd be more comfortable out by myself, you know, interacting with people yeah. that I pass. Uh, that that explains it. That's awesome. So. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, mm-hmm. I feel like the two things in this world that kind of take attention off of you are babies and dogs. Like if you have one or the other or both, it's, it's like people will direct it most of the time, at least direct it towards yeah. them. Like, Oh, look at the little baby or, you know, little dog or puppy. But like, if it's just you alone, it might be, yeah, I could see where that, where I kind of have the same mm-hmm. way too with you. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's just people might talk to you. Oh, it's like, can be kind of like a little daunting at times. Um, yeah. And most of the time, like for I'm pretty sure the three of us can agree. It's like when you're out in nature, probably want to be alone most of the time. So definitely. Yeah. 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 Uh, sometimes you encounter yes. the the curious hiker who will come up to you and ask, like, "What does that lens do? Or <laughs> what are you trying to photograph and stuff?" I had someone the other day. Um, mm-hmm. I, um, Beth, I was at Huffman Metro Park, like the big old yeah. lake right there, and um, I'm just saying because you probably know that place or you've been there. Um, mm-hmm. But so, anyways, I was at this for anyone else. I was at this big lake. Um, kind yeah. of in my county here. Yeah. Um, and it was like probably 10, 15 minutes before sunset, and I'm out sitting on this kind of giant boulder stone, like at the lake's edge. And I'm just looking out towards it, scanning for like shorebirds and ducks, not really shorebirds, but yeah, just ducks, any kind of like diving ducks and with like spying scopes, binoculars, whatever. And I hear this someone, like someone yelling behind me, some male or some dude, man, he's just like, Hey, how are you doing? And I kind of like turn around awkwardly. Cause I was, I wasn't like focused, but I was just kind of like looking out and appreciating the sunset. And I like turn around and he just kind of like walks right beside me. It's like the strangest thing. Cause I'm just kind of like, what are you doing? What do you want? And he just like starts talking to me. Like I'm like his friend or something. I'm like, what? <laughs> it just, I don't mind. I don't mind. It's it. not like there's it's weird. not like, it's not like, yeah. It's not like there's a global pandemic or anything either. You know? Oh yeah. No mask. Yeah. No, no mask. Yeah. He's just like, yeah, I'm enjoying the sunset, man. I'm like, me too. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe it was. <laughs> I don't know. So there's some weirdos out there. So, so is is it like the, the what, what like draws you to the outdoors? Is it I guess what draws you to it first? Is it photography? Is it the outdoors? You kind of answered this earlier, but maybe just kind of unpack it a little bit more. Like, what do you really get out of? Like, what do you really get out of hiking? I guess or photography. Oh yeah. Um, it's very. Uh, I I think hiking. I mean is definitely incredibly therapeutic. Um, um, anytime, uh, like, okay, I'll tell this little story, a little bit of a trauma thing, I guess. Uh, my, um, late husband passed away in January of 2019. And I was, in a deep grief, most of 2019. Um, it, but the only thing that kept drawing me out was to uh, just get out uh, and walk, um, and even at some of the local parks, you know, the smaller ones around here, uh, and take my camera out. It was kind of almost a mindful thing like because when you're walking I when I'm out in nature and I'm walking I feel very uh, at ease most of the time and then with the photography with if I have my camera with me I'm always 
looking for things in my surroundings that I might want to photograph. So it kind of keeps you in the moment. Um, and it brought me uh, the a little bit of joy as I was uh, processing through the grief last year. And um, it's been just, I'm, I'm would, I don't know that everybody, it would be the same for everyone, of course, but it's been one of the key um, things in my life that's kind of helped it's, me overcome It's nice because it's always there for you too. Like going out in nature, it's, it's like a 24 seven access almost. So it's like, it's always there to kind of help you de-stress, unwind, or, you know, put yeah. your kind of mind towards something creative like photography. So yeah, I could definitely agree with that. Yeah. It's, it's good that I found that outlet at least. Did you, did you, oh, yeah. cause, cause I mean, you said you liked outdoors and hiking before he passed too. Right. So, I mean, it's just kind of like you found it more, you found more meaning in going out after the fact, after that happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it was just very therapeutic for bringing my mind out of that um, kind of depression mindset I was in and to get me feeling uh, hopeful about things, especially when I was out in the spring. I, there was something uh, about the spring, um, and I would say when everything was going down, when... Um, COVID-19 first hit at the beginning of this year. It was right around uh, the beginning of spring. And just having, being able to still go outside um, and take photos and hike and everything was just, it it really helps you yeah. keep your sanity almost. Um, just being, mm -hmm. I find it very almost spiritual. Mm -hmm. I guess it's rejuvenating Being out in nature. Um, and yeah, I feel like so. and like earlier this year, like you're saying now, absolutely. Well, now more than ever this year, really in general, it's like, I feel like it's such, such a much needed thing is to, you know, be outdoors and appreciate that. Cause you know, it's like, it's what we need, you know, we need to, we need to experience that. And to, especially this year, it's no exception where it's like, what else did we really have for a while? I mean, yes. for a few months, you know, it wasn't really much, everything was closed. We had to isolate. It's like, what else are we going to do? So for sure. Yeah. Do you find like, uh, right. do you find like staying local? Cause like you're saying about like your local parks and everything around here. Did you find like staying local to be very helpful when you're like, let's say isolating in that case? Yeah. 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 Because I've, I feel, I feel really fortunate that I have uh, several local wetland areas and a couple of local parks, like within, you know, mm -hmm. five, 10 minute drive from my house. So I feel like I've been very fortunate to have that outlet, especially during all of this. So, you know, especially with, uh, in the springtime and everything when uh, people were kind of like kind of freaking out a little bit and right. everybody was like flooding the parks. It makes it nice to have one close by because like you could go at some point and, and the parking lot is full, but it's so close. You could come back a, a little later and check it out and see if it's died down a little bit, you know? So it was really nice. Yeah, to have very true, especially when you can't travel available. very far. I guess that was kind of a dumb question because it's like you couldn't really travel far as it is. And like you, that's all you really had was, you know, the local places anyways. But um, yeah, I definitely agree with you yeah. there. Yeah, it's very important um, and more convenient, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. So when you go on a hike and you're planning to do photography, do you – are you kind of a reactionary photographer? Do you just uh, take photos as you see them? Or are you like specifically looking for like a specific photo? Okay. Typically I take photos as I see them. Something will catch my eye, which I'm constantly the, and that comes kind of more into the uh, 
idea of being present in the moment, I guess, because I'm constantly scanning for things that uh-huh. catch my eye that I want to take a picture of. Um, every once in a while, like um, when I first got my telephoto lens earlier this year, I specifically went out a couple times to try to get pictures of birds. And that was the first time I kind of went out with an agenda, I guess. But uh, yeah, more often than not, I'm out there just with a camera and looking around to see what it makes sense. I could Would possibly you say take a picture of. So. Uh, I know you do macro stuff, but like for the other genres, would you say you're more of a kind of smaller scene photographer or kind of the wider view of everything? Okay. A bit small, smaller scene to this point. Um, I've been trying to kind of branch out a little bit with the landscaping photography, but I haven't. Yeah, um, it can definitely be hard, especially done too in much of it. Kind of our areas, because you know we we don't really have grand mountains or anything. Um, so you definitely have to work work a bit harder to get a good composition. Exactly. Well, we have a lot of gorges up here. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like gorges. I do like to. Uh, yeah, I do like I do like to get like the like the full scene waterfalls sometimes, but like I I haven't been very you know good about cal- carrying. I know a, you said bef- I, I said it to you before, but yeah, like lung exposures are probably one of the most mindful like photography experiences. I guess <laughs> I don't know what else you call it. Um, and yeah, yeah, like I seriously like. Well, they're so loud and you kind of get used to like the loudness if they are loud and they just get so it like kind of turns itself and kind of becomes really calming and very uh, just you get so locked into it, focused, I guess. And you just work your compositions and I just, I don't know, I get so lost in it. So, you know, I feel like it's, it really would be right up your alley to take those kind of photographs. Um, so if you took a tripod, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, they're fun though. They're fun. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I, 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 I do this like I do this kind of thing to myself a lot. Like um, I kept telling myself I was going to get a telephone <laughs> lens. I sat on it for like a year until I finally bought one. And so now I've been looking at more expensive tripods because the ones I have aren't all the greatest. And I'm kind of personally about to pull the plug on a more expensive tripod. Um, funny story today was kind of the last straw. I had my uh, like wildlife lens on there and it literally tipped over and almost like snapped off. So oh, it no. was fine. Everything was good, but I, I re- I'm about to pull the plug. I'm, I'm ready. Like I had a cheap <gasps> tripod. It's, it's time to upgrade. Get, get it. Get so or really right stuff. <laughs> I'm getting a Leo yeah. photo, I think, but it's, it's pretty good. It's kind of the in between oh. the really expensive and the, Really cheap. So, when Beth, when you were shopping around, or you said you, you said you kind of sat on the idea of a telephoto for about a year, were you like shopping around for different models of it, or is it just kind of like you just waited maybe for a better price? I was just, I had one in mind. I actually had one. <laughs> You're lazy in my about buying Amazon that too. Cart for months. <laughs> Before I finally That's bought it, I just, I just, mm-hmm. I just, I just couldn't bring myself to spend that much money on it. And then I was just finally like, <laughs> and then I was just finally one day I was just like, just buy it, just do it. And so I finally did. I was, I, 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 I I'm kind of cheap I sometimes. To, I hate I'm to say it to you. I mean, gear like, isn't ah, everything, but if you want to be professional, I don't know. Money, but you kind of have to get the nicest stuff mm-hmm. you can afford. Yeah. It, Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He, I figured you knew that, yeah. but it goes without saying. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that that goes for well, that goes for anything. Photography is yeah, that goes for anything. If you're gonna be passionate to about anything, get the best. I would say it's the most sure. expensive. Photography and like astronomy are two of the like crazy absolutely. Technologies, I would say absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're not wrong there. Um. If I'm kind of a gear person, so oh, yeah. if you don't mind me asking, Yours. what kind of brand of tripod is it? <laughs> yeah. 
What 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 kind uh, do you have? Um, or that I'm get that I'm looking oh. at. I haven't really looked at any yet. <laughs> Probably technically. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't even know. I have. <laughs> I have a. I actually have an old one that used to be my uh, late husband's, and it's old, old, old. Uh, I don't even know what it's probably brand it is at all. <laughs> but uh, then I bought. I bought one, and it was I don't know. It was like seventy bucks, but it was real cheap. But um, yeah. I'm if I'm I'm like if you're gonna do it, you need to buy the best because especially being clumsy as I am, you wanna make sure to try mm, your very I best mean, to protect the camera equipment. <laughs> so well, as much as nice I can. Not that, not that, you can buy not that it won't happen probably. You can kinda, but, you unlike know. the camera gear, like the lenses, camera bodies, you can kinda throw it around a little bit. Like it's meant to take some beating, like put, you know, puckered it down in like a lake or a creek. It doesn't really matter. Like it kind of is supposed to take that sort of physical abuse, I guess. Obviously you don't want to just throw it around, but you know, it can take right. some beating. I'd recommend, um, I have a Benro, it's a carbon fiber model, which carbon fiber is always what I'd recommend. And, but it's only like a sub hundred thirty, hundred fifty $150 tripod. And it, it works out pretty well. It's really slim. Um, so it only weighs maybe a few pounds and it works pretty well. It comes to the ball head and everything included. So it's pretty nice. Nice budget level, I guess. Right. But yeah, I can actually let you borrow mine if you want. <laughs> but okay. If you want, if you want to try it out, take it for a spin. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, no problem. So yeah, uh, tell us. Mm-hmm. Let, let's kind of dive into um, something well, I'm kind of excited to hear more about. Uh, you've been writing. Uh, well, let, okay, let me back up. So you you write poetry also, as well as photography. Uh, take photos, yeah. Um, and you kind of. Well, you got a book, as I mentioned in the intro, yes. it's called Love Letters to Myself yes. and Other Poems. Um, and I'm really excited about it personally, but <laughs> so tell us maybe about all of, pretty much everything about that, like why poetry, um, kind of the idea of why you decided to kind of marry these two creative mediums and, you know, how the whole process came to be. Well, um, I used to uh, write poetry in high school. Um, I kind of got away from it for many years. Um, And I, last year I was suffering from a severe writer's block um, after my husband passed away. And I couldn't even hardly bring myself to write my journal at all or anything. You know, so when I finally overcame that earlier this year, I was writing um, and when I was, I, I hate to, I don't like to talk myself up like, but when I was reading it, I was like, this is quite poetic you know and um I was reading some um other poets I was reading some of their their books and um some of their work on Instagram and it was um it was really inspiring me to um give it a give it a shot again and I once once I finally started I just it's almost like there's no stopping and now I just keep writing and which is awesome. And then um, when I got up to a hundred poems, I said, um, I am really going to think about publishing this. And I was trying to, because I've always wanted to kind of get my, try to get my photos out there a little bit. Um, but I've never tried to sell them. You know, prints or something. Um, as you know, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, prints, yes, prints. I can't think of the word, <laughs> but uh, but when I thought about illustrating my 
my poetry book with my photos and kind of having it as a combination, um, that seemed like a much more, um, mm. doable option for me, I guess. Um, and I could, I could write and then I could, uh, look, think of a particular poem and, uh, you know, look through my photos and choose one that kind of, um, seem to fit with that particular poem. And I would, you know, pair them together. And I, of course, uh, when I started, I was, uh, putting the poem, like, uh, superimposing the poems on top of the photo, putting them on Instagram. Um, so then I, after the, like I said, after the hundred poems, I really started toying with the idea of, uh, trying to publish and I'm still, I'm done with it. Um, but I'm still kind of not sure about self-publishing versus trying to find an actual publishing company to do it because I, now I've, now I've kind of created a monster. <laughs> I'm kind of. I've kind of gotten to this point where I'm have certain things. I, I want it the certain way and I want it to look. I like, I have a vision in my head of how I want it to look. And I'm afraid if I try to use some of the um, templates uh, that they have available online for self publishing, I'm not going to be able to get it just the way I want it. But you know, that's, yeah, that's, neither here nor there, whatever. But uh, I really liked the idea of, okay, so I write poetry. I put some of my photographs. I introduce the world to both of them together. And it's something I don't think. I, I can only think I mean, of it, one it, other example. Has been done um, very often. Kind of not actually. great stuff, but, <laughs> but he's a photographer by so, trade too, as well as a poet who does haiku. Um, yeah, it's that's really neat. I, I really, ever since you pitched that idea to me personally, I was like really impressed. Like I just, yeah. not only for you, but like just the idea itself is really cool. Um, and it's worth, like you said, mentioning that you're not, you're not necessarily putting like the photos and the words side by side, but you're actually, as you say, superimposing yeah. them where it's like the background, the words, the words are on top of the photo, which I think is also really kind of neat and makes you like kind of look twice. Um, I guess yes. so. I guess they kind of both the ideas, both those things live in harmony. Like, did it feel kind of lacking to have one or the other? Like, would you ever put out just a photography or just a poetry book? Um, well, I think for the most part, I've, if you are familiar with any poetry book, most of the time, because it's poetry and it's not prose and it's not, the words aren't taking up the entire page. Most of the time people will hire an illustrator to, uh, you know, draw pictures or whatever for their, for their poems, just to give it more of a, an aesthetic, I guess. Um, but as far as the, poetry books go, I think I would still stick with my photos, but I would definitely consider um, you mm -hmm. doing just I feel, I feel like it's like, it kind of complements one, if it seemed there both of them, you know, kind of complements one to the other, other you know? because it's like the, the hiking, the outdoors experience that kind of helps, you know, kind of rejuvenate the soul, I guess. But then it's like the, the words also kind of help you. It's like therapy on both sides, therapeutic, and they both kind of complement each other. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. really cool. Absolutely, and I think a lot. Of, I think a lot of my poems, a lot of my poems, do kind of um, deal with, you know, the uh, natural world. So, in some form or it's, another, it's really cool how so it's, it all, the it photos are yours and the poems of, are yours. Um, I mean, I'm sure, there's, hand, I'm sure there's photo books that have photos like that, but it's probably just stock photos or just a separate photographer yeah. or something. That, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Right. 
It's yeah, it was definitely when I when I came up with it and I <laughs> and, and I was that's like your baby adamant though. about it afterwards. I'm like, I want this <laughs> I mean, whole that, thing to just yeah. be me. <laughs> that sounds kind of bad, but yeah, I want I want I want to do I want it to be responsible <laughs> yeah, that, for awesome, everything man. in there. That's really cool. Much, um, is there like because like, you said you finished forward, it right? But, so you know. is there like a release date you have coming up? Oh no, I have, I have, uh, I have to, there's a couple, uh, legal steps you have to take next. Uh, ISBN. Uh, you have to get assigned the, okay. the, the book number, um, before you can publish it. Yes. And, uh, at some point, I think in the publishing process, uh, you oh, want to, yeah. Okay. Um, get it, get it copyrighted. Um, but, but right now I have, I've been researching online, uh, self-publishing versus going through a publishing company. I have been, uh, looking at the options. So I um, would think I, I think I am going to attempt to, uh, put it together uh, on a self-publishing uh, template online, uh, at least maybe get it somewhat to my liking and at least have it uh, available on Amazon and Kindle. Um, but I am, I do intend to uh, also mm -hmm. submit the work to a uh, publishing company Those agents get expensive that too, don't require so an agent. I could definitely understand that. Yeah. See if anybody, <laughs> anybody will pick it up. So yeah. Yeah. There are, there are there and they're not, uh, of course they're not the larger publishing companies, but there are smaller mm -hmm. publishing companies that are willing to publish works That's that awesome. Aren't yeah. backed by an agent. I know I'll be looking so. forward to it. So <laughs> whenever you do release it, that's yeah. what I'm looking into. The pressure, of course, take your time with it because it's it's going to be worth it, you know, no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And now that it's all now that it's all done and together, uh, and then my, promoting the it, the majority of my like time on is here or on, <laughs> wherever, uh, yeah, researching awesome. and trying to get it all put yeah, together. Definitely. So that's cool. Is there anything else you want to add to that, it. or anything else about the book? Absolutely. You want to tell us? Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I just wanted to mention um, to our viewers, Beth has been probably I think since day one, yeah. episode one, you've been listening to us. So I really appreciate it. <laughs> it's great to have our, our viewers and stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So yeah, that's for anyone else out there. If you want to be a guest. Oh yeah. So, really appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is Beth, it's been a great conversation. Uh, where can people go to learn more about the book and or your work? Um, well, I have uh, hmm. my Instagram page at uh, robot poet girl. And I also just mm, okay. um, created a Gmail account. All one just word. for that. That's robot poet okay. robot poet girl at gmail.com. So as a yes. As of now that's as of now that's my only two okay. mm -hmm. yeah. options. Awesome. But I'm hoping well, to all those links will be down below. Get a couple for more you guys, so make sure to go down Eventually. there and check her out. And buy her book, maybe when it comes out. Really support her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. Our guest today was Beth Melton. You can read her upcoming book and purchase it down below. Love letters to myself and other poems. And you can follow her on Instagram, both at her poetry and photography accounts. As always, thank you again for your continued support. And we'll catch you at the same time next week.